you have to understand we did this 20 years ago, um, which was really exciting. And then we had this uh, you know, lag phase, one can call it. Um, and uh, what I said to Ken, um, I think it was very brave that he took this up, because obviously it needs uh, quite a lot of uh, development. And uh, it's a platform technology, as, as you heard. So it can be used for you know, any kind of uh, delivery of uh, cells or drugs. Um, and pancreatic cancer just happened to be the thing we, we, we started out with. Um, you may recall from the early 90s and even 80s, uh, the phase two studies in pancreatic cancer with iphosphamide. And they have been rather successful with regard to tumor responses. However, you, uh, the, the elder people, pancreatic cancer, showed some very remarkable side effects because of the iphosphamide. I mean, it's given in much higher doses, as the oncologist amongst you do know, say in leukemia and lymphomas, but uh, a patient 70 years old with diabetes, kidney problems, heart disease, whatever, uh, couldn't just take these high dosages. So that's uh, one of the reasons why we would we would know that there would be a beneficial tumor response, but yet the dosing which was administered during these uh, phase two studies was just too high. Now, um, I will hop over all the data for pancreatic cancer. I'm not going to lecture uh, my esteemed colleagues here about uh, pancreatic cancer and the journey we are taking. Maybe just telling that the, the, the um, incidence is increasing as is ca pancreatic cancer related deaths being number two in um, 15 years to come. And we are crying out loud for this being a medical emergency. Um, you need to have a target. Uh, to pick a target is quite a stake if you talk about target therapy. So taking the route we took here to do the target therapy with what Paul Ehrlich once called magic bullets, in this case with a little help of our radiologists, uh, was actually the trick we used. Um, you have seen that before. Uh, basically, we took a rather conventional uh, vector, PB322 uh, backbone with a strong uh, CMV promoter to express this uh, this gene in these hex cells. This is basically the first apparatus. Looks a little bit like an espresso machine, right? And um, well, it functions a little bit different. This is actually this nozzle where these uh, uh, little um, um, uh, drops fall out then into the basin. And as shown, this is a so called life and death assay, all nice and green, showing you the survival of these cells after encapsulation. Um, this was basically developed and done in a basement at the University of Rostock. So that's where this all started out. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I show you some of the preclinical data here. Um, these was, at that time, the best we could do. New dose experiments uh, with subcutaneous implantation of human pancreatic tumor cells. And what we never saw before uh, after this, uh, you know, basically single um, uh, therapy was a complete remission and this is basically where you see these capsules and there are one, two, three uh, living tumor cells, not more than that. Brian also elucidated to the local effect and this is where we did an experiment where we put the capsules onto one side of the tumor, treated then systemically with these low-dose iphosphamide and then measured the active compounds. And as you can see, uh, there is just um, on the side of the injection the, the real high levels of the active compound. So um, how you could deliver this? Um, and we thought the vascular route would be a good thing to do and that's what it happened to be then. Um, we did some preliminary experiments in pigs, as a, large pigs, as a preclinical study. Uh, the pig has uh, two arteries leading into the, into the pancreas. We took the one which is close to the, to the spleen. These were in vitro experiments where we just showed that you know, these capsules would pass through a catheter. Uh, and then we would deliver, our radiologist that is, 
By the way, they were very excited about these kind of studies. Um, uh, the radiologists would develop the, the, the capsules into the splenic artery, splenic part of the artery leading to the pancreas, and uh, then we would, uh, you know, uh, look at these animals. The, the interesting thing about this is, as, as a physician, I did the next day, and we were concerned about acute pancreatitis because, as you know, the pancreas is a very sensitive organ. So the next day I would do a physical exam on those pigs and they were screaming and I was so frightened uh, that they would develop pancreatitis but then the veterinarian was just laughing out loud because what I wouldn't know, but he would know, of course, that pigs are ticklish. So they didn't have pancreatitis, it was just uh, a ticklish pig. Um, we then looked, uh, you know, how it looked like into the, the animals. This is in German, but there was just a transient rise of pancreatic enzymes. And you can see here um, the, the, the capsules uh, in the lumen uh, and the pancreas as such was basically really virtually normal. There was no, no inflammation, nothing. Um, we also did some experiments in isolated pancreatic glands uh, in pigs to see how the blood flow goes because in a way, of course, uh, we didn't want to have an embolization effect. And this is basically a setup uh, where we would oxygenize the blood with ECMOs you would use in, in, um, in uh, child uh, 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 surgery. Uh, and then, of course, you do have a drop in the blood flow, but it's still there, okay? Just to show you, it's not an embolization. It really is, uh, um, you know, still keeping the blood flow. Um, we have done this, as mentioned, uh, in, in mouse, where the capsules were uh, implanted into the tumor uh, itself. And also I will show this later in, in breast of dogs and interproteinally, just to show you that the system is working and it has nothing to do with embolization. You have seen those, nice, uh, and I maybe can skip over those because these have been shown. Um, and now the interesting part is these supra-selective um, angiography and cannulation of arteries leading into the tumor. Now, for those not being radiologists, you have, just have to believe me that this rather irregular shaped vessel is the vessel leading directly into the tumor. So that's where the capsules were then basically um, delivered, as you can see here. Um, and um, then, you know, we would wait a day really to make sure that the patients would not develop any kind of pancreatitis, even if we could show in an animal that that wouldn't be the case. And I must admit that that was the one thing I was uh, worried most, but it really did not happen in neither of the, all the patients who received this ther therapy. One of those patients died uh, uh, a couple days after, uh, uh, eight days after the installation and therapy and uh, as per protocol, those patient, patients, of course, would go to autopsy. And on the post-mortem, uh, this is the, pla the, the stent I put into this patient uh, to uh, relieve the jaundice. You would see just some viable tumor cells, but lots of necrosis. And again, this is not caused by the, the embolism. It's, it's really the tumor effect you, you see. And this is also an explanation for another phenomenon maybe we, we, we saw later. It's just the tumor responses. As mentioned, um, uh, the stable disease in most partial response and two from the first study uh, and some of these uh, CAT scans. Uh, those you have seen, um, it was quite remarkable. And even in the face, in, in the second multicenter study, we could basically repeat those results. The problem then was that, um, as uh, was mentioned before, uh, it was not possible to freeze thaw the capsules at the developmental stage. They were in 20 years ago, or 15 years rather, um, and also it was not that easy to have a quality control about you know, the content of cells and the activity of the enzyme. So for that matter, the, pro the, the project uh, was abandoned by um, by the, the former company. You have seen those slides also, so I just don't need to, to show you that again, um, so you can, can see again the, the gemcitabine data and from our study at that time. Now, um, that's 
a very nice graph which I like to show. If you start out a thing, you think it's here's everything, then comes this phase where you wouldn't give it to your dog, and eventually it becomes standard. We are certainly not uh, at a standard therapy, but there was a, a quote-unquote normal model, that is, there are dogs who normally, naturally I should say, develop breast cancer. Uh, and in those animals, um, you know, they would be treated with these capsules as well. And as you can see here uh, in these solid tumors, one would also see quite a substantial response uh, to this particular kind of therapy. Again, underscoring the fact that this kind of combination, low-dose iphosphamide uh, and the capsules expressing the cytochrome T, 2B1, really do work um, and it has nothing to do with um, embolization. Um, we also then uh, went to another animal model which is Syngenic, um, that's a rat model with a rat pancreatic tumor and again could basically repeat the experience we previously did in the newt mice model with a pancreatic cancer and then uh, showing the same uh, kind of therapy response um, and we also basically used some low-dose radiation at that time just to uh, understand whether this would uh, enhance the effect which wasn't really the case. I mean, it was basically virtually the same, the same here. Okay, um, for me this kind of application of the capsules together with iphosphamate, the ideal setting certainly is not to give this uh, angiographically but, for instance, in the peritoneal cavity or the pleural cavity for that matter. And we did this in an uh, animal model um, for um, colorectal cancer uh, where we would, um, you know, initiate the colorectal cancer and then treat a couple of days later with iphosphamide um, and again using the sugar baker index and other, uh, as you saw here, um, 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 tunnel methods we could basically show in those animals um, a reduction and even complete remission of those experimental colorectal cancer model. Now, um, well, that's how it ended in a way. Uh, that's me um, after two studies and a lot of preclinical work, lots of excitement. Um, that was the resume from 15 years. Um, we could show that the gene, gene construct as such is safe, the encapsulation is safe, everything is, is fine, but it didn't work out that way. So um, that's the summary of what we did 20 years ago, as a matter of fact. And what you have seen already is basically um, what has been presented now by Brian and Walter is that they got a grip on the manufacturing process and we are now looking forward to uh, new clinical studies. Thank you.